Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to have a go at making a passion fruit flavoured hard seltzer. So a hard seltzer is basically flavoured sparkling water which is alcoholic. It's really basic. So to go into that I've got brewing sugar one kilo. I'll use nearly five litres of spring water. I'm going to use Kolsch yeast. Now this is an interesting one. A Kolsch is a German beer um, from Cologne and it's a very clear beer. This usually does create some nice crispy clear brews. So I'm going to use that. I'm using a Mangrove Jack's passion fruit flavour which I'm going to put into the demijohn or the fermentation vessel and then I'll also add some at the end of the brew as a back flavour. I'm putting a very small amount of tomato puree into the brew that acts as a yeast nutrient and it also contains a bit of vitamin C and I'm going to use some pectolase to clear it because this will make it slightly cloudy and that pectolase will help that to clear. I'm going to begin by adding my kilo of brew sugar into this saucepan, try and do it as neatly as possible and I want to melt the sugar in some warm water. I'll add a small amount of spring water. Now I use spring water because the tap water in Leeds is chlorine and it has given my brews off flavours before now. There's the brew sugar. We'll add a little bit of heat. It won't take long to dissolve, it's pretty good stuff this. It's basically dextrose. The yeast finds it easier to digest than normal caster sugar. So again, it does leave you with a cleaner flavour to use brew sugar rather than normal caster sugar. Today's fermentation vessel is a Tesco 5 litre water bottle. Straightforward, got a funnel going into it and I'm going to begin by adding some cold spring water. So in this goes. I'm then going to add about five drips of this passion fruit flavour. Roughly. I will back flavour it afterwards if the passion fruit flavour doesn't carry through the fermentation, but I'll see first before I decide on that. It smells amazing actually. Next, a little bit of tomato paste, and for anyone that has ever used an air still and made a tomato paste wash, then that's exactly what I'm making, except for this tomato paste wash will be passion fruit flavoured and hopefully sparkling. Next ingredient is my pectolase and I'm going to put a generous heaped teaspoonful of that in there. And as I said before the pectolase will help break down the cloudiness that the tomato paste will cause. I'm just going to give this a bit of a shake around, you can see it there in there. I just want those little sausages of tomato paste to break up in the water. The final colour for this will be a kind of a a yellowish colour. It's actually one of the easiest kinds of brews you can do. It's as easy as a turbo cider. It really does smell quite passion fruity. You can't smell the tomato paste and the flavour from the tomato paste will not carry through the fermentation. Okay the brew sugar has now dissolved enough. There's a little bit of cloudiness in there but it's fine. I'm going to pour that in. I'm trying not to do it too warm you see. And I'm not hiding, honest. I'll just get that in there. I need a better camera angle to do this, don't I? There we go. Now I'm now going to top this up with just some spring water. It won't make a huge kraus in this. It'll be quite a modest sized one so I can confidently top it up quite high. I'm going to pour some out for the hydrometer anyway and that won't go back in, so that's fine. So it's a lovely dusty pink colour. It will go clear. Right, I'll pour some into the hydrometer flask. Now this is too warm for me to take the original gravity so I'm going to put this in the fridge and come back to it but I'll just finish the brew off in the meantime. So I'm going to get my Kolsch yeast in there. I'm going to add a, a rounded teaspoonful. 
and then a tiny little bit more for good luck and that's enough. The water's round about body temperature, it's very sugary, the yeast is going to like this. Fermentation will not take very long to kick in and the passion fruit smell is very very apparent. So I'm going to add my airlock and this is a hole drilled through the top from the plastic uh, water bottle with a bung push through it. When I move this, and I am going to move this into my utility room, I'll remove the lid and the airlock first because the plastic bottle acts like a lung and <laughs> sucks in the water from the airlock and you don't want that water going into your brew. Anyway, I'm going to come back to this in about 20 minutes because by then the uh, liquid in the fridge will have cooled down enough for me to take the original gravity. I can then get this labelled up and that'll be this done for today. So I'll be back shortly. The liquid is at 20 degrees and I'm now going to pop in the hydrometer for the original gravity. And I'm starting on an original gravity of 1070, 1.070. So I've got my fermentation vessel in place in my utility room and the next time you'll see me will be in a few weeks time when fermentation is over and it comes to either clearing or bottling. So I'll catch you then. Morning from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be clearing my passion fruit hard seltzer. Let's have a look at it. So as you can see it isn't very clear and as far as I'm concerned a hard seltzer should be clear. Now it's been in the demijohn for over a month, in fact a month and five days and as far as I can tell it's finished fermenting so I want to get it transferred from here into here with some filings and get it cleared. This is either going to make or break it. It's going to make it look nice or it's going to break it in the sense that it won't be sparkling. But I'm going to have to take that gamble and that's what I'm doing today. So it's bung unscrewed, siphoning tube in. I've got the tube held in place with this handy clip. The bottom of the tube is into the bottom of the demijohn just above what I would deem the sediment line to be. So let's crack on. And out it comes. So I'm using Clear It Wine Finings from Young's. It's a two-step process. A teaspoonful of bottle A, and then an hour later, a teaspoonful of bottle B. So I shall get this one in now while it's filtering into the demijohn. And I've got to say that the passion fruit smell is really coming through. So if this does sparkle, I've got fairly high hopes for it. Fingers crossed. Right, findings A, in you go. That'll do. As you can see, I've got a fairly busy kitchen. I've got three gallons of various brews to bottle this morning. And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell us that this is done. So this is what I've got. I'm just going to give it a little bit of agitation to make sure that those findings are nicely mixed. Okay, I'm going to come back to this in an hour's time and add findings B. See you then. Hey folks, over an hour's passed and as you can see Finings A has had no impact whatsoever. So I'm going to add Finings B now and hope for the best. Teaspoonish equivalent, give it a swizzle round. Right, let's see what happens. I'll give you an update in a few days time. Catch you then folks. Good morning from the kitchen folks. It's passion fruit hard seltzer bottling day. Let's have a look at it. I've had the finings in there for 24 hours, one day only and look at that. Perfect. So I'm more than happy to bottle as is. There's a minute amount of activity in the airlock which means there's a tiny bit of life left in it so I'm hoping that I haven't uh, killed off the yeast with the finings and that there's still going to be a bit of sparkle once it hits the brewing sugar which is going into the bottles. So just to explain I'm putting a bit of brewing sugar about this much into each 500ml bottle so I'm hoping that in that there's still a bit of yeast in suspension 
And when the yeast hits this sugar, it will hopefully eat the sugar, which will create a tiny fermentation. It will raise the alcohol by volume by a very small amount. But more importantly, that will create CO2 as a byproduct, which will hopefully give it pressure and therefore a fizz. So that's my priming sugar in the bottle, bung out, siphoning tube in. You'll see I'm holding the tube firm with this very handy clip and the bottom of the siphoning tube is just into the sediment line, but that doesn't matter because the first 100 mil that comes out is going into my hydrometer tube. Let's do it. So the first bit that's come out is a bit milky, but actually not too bad. And then I'm into the bottles. I can actually really smell the passion fruit, so I've got high hopes for this one. So I'm using a mixture of bottles today, all different beer bottles. This one holds a particularly fond place in my heart. It's a, a very old Newcastle Brown bottle. And I'm actually a volunteer litter picker in Leeds, and that was the first glass bottle I found while I was litter picking, and it was black and green inside and out. And I spent weeks cleaning that. And this is the first time I've used it since then. So I've recycled something which is probably going back to the 1980s. It was buried very, very deep in a lot of rubbish. Oh, there we go. Bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that this is over. So they're all full. That's a half bottle. I reckon if I add what's in the hydrometer tube into that, I'll end up with a, a slightly milky bottle, but it should fill it up. So before I go any further, I'm going to take the final gravity. And that is slightly more buoyant than I was expecting. I hope I haven't bottled too early. That is on 1.020. Hmm. Okay, it's time to work out the final alcohol by volume for my passion fruit seltzer. So I take the original gravity of 1.070. I deduct from that the final gravity of 1.020, and that equals 0.05 and then I multiply this by 131.25 and that equals 6.56%. I'm happy with that. That's a nice percentage. It's, it's basically alcopop level. I was wondering whether or not to back flavour this but I've just had a taste of what's in the bottom of there and I don't need to add any more of this. It tastes really lovely actually. Very nice passion fruit flavour and still quite sweet. So I've ended up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bottles. Not bad at all. Okay, so I need to obviously uh, cap my bottles. The flip is the best one to do because it's just as easy as this. Oh, what a genius invention they are. The rest are going to need crown capping using the Predator Kegland uh, handheld crown capper. It's not my favourite job, but it's got to be done. So let's do it. So I've got my bottle down there in the sink. I'm capping downwards so it's less likely the bottle will slip. I'm also using this silicon non-slip mat. So I take a crown cap, I put it into the capper like this, and then I lower it down onto the bottle. And hopefully it will go nice and even. In fact, this one will do. That's a good bottle to cap. They're not all as easy as this. So you can see that one's done nicely. I've got a few more to do. It's not that exciting to watch, so I'll be back in a bit. Okay, there's all my bottles. I'm just gonna give them a rinse now to get any sticky residue off the outside before I label them, because nobody really likes sticky bottles. So there they are, 10 clean bottles standing on my sink. So I've got my bottle labels made up in a simple Microsoft Word template. 
I'm just going to print those out. Just going to label my bottles now, make them look nice. Take a bit of pride in them, you know. And there they are. Welcome to the conservatory, folks. This is where my passion fruit hard seltzer is going to condition for the next month. Here it is. So the conservatory is south facing, and as you can see on a nice day like today, it's basically really sunny, it's warm, it's warm enough to grow things like peppers and a loofah. So it's pretty good for conditioning in here, in all honesty. I'm choosing this place to condition specifically because I'm slightly concerned that I might have bottled too early with the final gravity being so high. Now, I don't think I have because, you know, action did seem to have stopped. But just on the off chance I've made bottle bombs, I'm going to condition it in this box. And it's a safe box then because then it'll be closed in and under this table just here. So I'll just push that back under there. So the next film from me will be opening and tasting in about a month's time, so I'll catch you then. Good evening from the kitchen folks, it's my passion fruit hard seltzer opening night. I'm quite excited about this one, it's my first ever hard seltzer. Is it going to be a hard failure or is it going to be a hard success? Let's find out. Well, you can already see, if I just wipe the bottle, that this is beautifully clear. I mean, it's as clear as water. I'm hoping it's carved. I'm hoping I'm going to get a tss when I open it, but there'll be a sparkle. But above all, I hope it tastes nice. Let's find out. Am I going to get a tss? I got a little one, didn't I? So it wasn't a major tss, but it was a small one. Now that will be because I've cleared this. So let's see how it pours. Okay, it's not looking amazing. Yeah, there's a few bubbles there, but it kind of doesn't look hugely carbonated, does it? Wow. It tastes nice, though. The Mangrove Jack's passion fruit flavouring is really good. And in actual fact, it really does taste like a hard seltzer. You get that sort of watery edge to it. You know, if you have a, a can of hard seltzer, you get that sort of, you can tell that it's like a flavoured water, which is alcoholic. That definitely comes through. It's just a pity that it's not very bubbly. It must be down to the use of finings, but a cloudy hard seltzer just didn't seem right. You know, that's something that you do expect to be clear. And if I hold that near the camera, I don't know if you can see, there are minute bubbles in there. It isn't completely still. There are some bubbles but they're tiny. It's an effervescence effect rather than a, a, a fizzy effect. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this. It tastes very nice. Better luck next time, hopefully. So anyway, cheers folks, and I'll catch you on the next brew. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production you can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. 
If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.